and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And yay summer still. Yes. We're going to say that every week. I have a summer. whole week off next week, so do you have well, half I, a week I'm off. I'm only, yeah, we're both going up to um, Lancaster for the Free State Project's um, Pork Fest. Um, the 18th annual yeah. Porcupine I Freedom been, Festival. I haven't been in, um, yeah, wow, I don't know, right? I'd say Five, five years, maybe four years. It's hard to, years all blend in. Um, I will say for those who, it's a nice festival. I mean, it is definitely, it used to be more of a camping trip and less of a festival. I think now it's more of a festival and less of a camping trip. Like it's one with the other. For It's different things for different people. Um, I am impressed with the fact that um, Rogers Campground, which is fairly large. I think they have like oh, probably close to 500 sites if I had to guess. I mean, it's the largest private campground yeah. in um, New Hampshire. Every single campsite is full and 2,500 people have bought tickets to attend. So my little, pe Dan and I were like, hey, we haven't gone in a few years. We'll just go on a nice little camping trip. Yeah, I don't really know. It'll it's, be fun. Uh, I think it's going to be work for you. It'll be fun. I, I It'll, uh, it's going to be amazing. Uh, we have over 700 events on oh, the yeah. schedule. Which One could of the be things, little things, we, big things. Sure. You know, so we have obviously the stuff down in the Crypto 6 Pavilion. Uh, that's where like our main stage speakers are. I'm really excited about Naomi Wolf. Yep. So, well, she's you know, come around. Um, she, uh, you know, she's someone I read in college. Yep. Uh, you know, my feminist uh, women's libby days and, uh, and never really grew out of that phase <laughs> for what it's worth. And um, she's come to Free State Project events over the yeah. years and she came to Liberty Forum in 2014, I believe. Uh, maybe uh, maybe a little earlier, but she had just returned from Guantanamo Bay. She yeah. was one of the few um, journalists that they actually let in there, and I think that was a life-changing experience for her. Mm. She actually did say, amongst other things, she was like, you know, uh, she's a New Yorker, she's Jewish, and, and she actually said, you know, I never really understood the whole gun rights thing and why people are like, oh, we might need guns. And she even said, you know, even as a Jew, I didn't really understand it, which right. always surprises me because we find a lot of people in the liberty movement are actually people who have been hurt by the state yes. or whose generations of families, their sort of histories of, you know, one group of people trying to really restrict the li liberties of other groups. So she came back from Guantanamo and she said, guys, I never got it. I never understood gun rights, whatever. She's like, but once I went there and I came back, she's like, I was wrong. I understand it now. It is defensive. It is a way to just kind of level the playing field. Yep. Um, so I haven't seen her in a few years, but I think she's going to be uh, really yeah. exciting to hear her talk. She'll be there on Friday and Saturday. You know, we have Tom Woods coming yep. in, uh, Bob Murphy, who um, does the Contra Cruise. Dave, and the guy um, I like. Dave Smith. Dave Smith and, it, so, and his cohort. Dan likes the cohort more than Dave Smith. Yeah. But I'm kind that was half of the reason why we decided is I nice. was like, I really think I want to see Dave Smith live someplace sometime. And I could go to New York or wherever and see, right. you know. But so he's a comedian, and I highly recommend for folks who do like uh, comedy, there is a special, I think it's Netflix, uh, but it's online somewhere, and it's called Libertas, and it was his special, and it actually, like, I love comedy, so yeah. it just happened to pop up, you know, in, in my suggestions years ago, I think it was the day it came out, and I had no idea who this guy yeah. was, and I was just like, oh, what's this? Oh, I'll watch an hour stand-up. And I was like, damn, this guy's funny, yeah, yeah. you know? And then I started researching him, and I was like, oh, he's actually a libertarian. Awesome. And then we brought him out to Pork Fest uh, two years ago. Yep. He, I, I believe his wife had a baby, baby last yep. year, so yep, maybe that's, you know, they, um, they couldn't come in that window. And uh, so him and Robbie, Robbie that's, that's Thursday it. night. Yeah. Now, Pork Fest is sold You can't out. just come. So even if we're just telling even you how awesome it, it is, you still next year, come. buy the tickets early. And in fact, I am putting the tickets, or uh, Dennis, the organizer, the chef putting de village, tickets on sale? we are going to actually start selling tickets on Monday when the official event kicks off. And, um, and so, you know, if this is, sounds awesome and you're like, Gee, oh. darn, I want to come next year, then uh, make it happen. Yep. Get in it's early. Neat. It is fun. Um, <laughs> I think we're going to sell out again. In fact, I think now we're on trend. You know, the more totalitarianism right. uh, takes off yeah. and more control, police state, I think more 
people are really looking for answers. I feel like it's our time. You know, if people are looking around and they're kind of going, well, I don't really like these lunatics over here and I don't really like these lunatics over here. What about these people in the middle who yeah. are just literally saying, it doesn't really matter, do what you want. How about we all stop controlling yeah. everyone else? I mean, that's what's happening, right? Is we, these groups of people are like pitted against yep. each other in a way where everything just becomes this extreme. It's hard, and it's hard to convince people, like to just make people stop long enough to think it through and say, okay, how but should I'm, it be? Not just how are we going to demand it be? But I'm less about, exactly, but I'm less about even thinking it through. I think that's part of the problem is that we are in this state where we think, we have to control every minutia of human behavior. Right. And that only it's usually not ends the case. badly. Right. You know, I mean, the more, um, there's, there's a saying that I think it was Ernie Hancock who does Freedom Phoenix, so like an old radio shock jock from like back in the day kind of thing. And he would always just say, uh, freedom's the answer. What's the question? Right, right. And I think that that's such a great way to approach it, right? Freedom's the answer. What's the question? I mean, why wouldn't freedom right. be the answer, right? Like, who who are these control freaks who think, well, yeah. I'm going to tell you so what that, you have to do so with, like, your face or, like, when you leave the house or Something whatever, relevant right? to this week, because Carla and I generally just wing these shows. <laughs> so something <laughs> relevant this week was um, up in the state house, I guess it would have been last week, um, on one of the session days over there in Bedford, um, they passed um, House Bill 220, which basically, I wish I had the words in front of me, but basically it starts out with that we all have um, an inherent right to bodily integrity or something inherent, along that line. Uh, inherent, yeah, yeah, uh, basic, essential, inherent. Essential, inherent, right there. And that's um, the first sentence. To body autonomy, I something think Something like yeah. that, right? And then it says, accordingly, comma, which is very important when you're looking at what laws say, um, the state can't mandate vaccinations, blah, 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 blah. And it, 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 if I, you just I, read I the first... I think it wasn't mandate. I think it says you cannot be compelled, compelled. right? And so But it's... then it did go on. I mean, the first paragraphs, but I mean, it did... It, Although it's mentioned COVID-19 specifically, it doesn't limit it to COVID-19 because of that word accordingly. So it was basically vaccinations in general, but it did talk about the state. This is not the world. It was basically the state and all the political subdivisions. So that's the county and the city and the towns and all that stuff. And then in the second paragraph, it did carve out exceptions to paragraph one. Um, and that bothered a lot of people because it did cu cut that back. But a lot of those exceptions are things that are already in the law in other places. But I, I was yeah. having a back and forth because I, agree, while I would love to agree that it, we should, you know, it, it would be nice to be able to just stop at that first sentence and be like, there you go, it's right there. You know, there's going to be challenges. You know, there'll be lawsuits. Um, entities that shouldn't be doing it will st will do it, and entities that can do it, pe somebody will sue and say you can't do. Um, but I did have, there were, I was trying to be like, I hate to have to think it through, but I was trying to come up with examples of, because the, the exceptions, the carve outs were um, vaccinations required for admission to school, because if you want to go to kindergarten, you have to have whatever, probably measles, mump, rubella, but there is a religious exemption that you can sign. Um, another one was nursing homes and state hospitals and any run by, but not that doesn't mean CMC. That doesn't mean, but that would mean Manchester Health Clinic, I assume, because we probably pay for that. That's probably local. Um, I forget what the other two. There were like four exceptions. And I was going back and forth with a friend who was like, this bill does absolutely nothing. And I was like, oh, I don't know if it does nothing. It doesn't do all the things, which we would like. But it does say you can't make me um, have to be vaccinated to go to Hampton Beach See, or here's to the, the library. Thing. I wish we could just go back to what the New Hampshire Constitution says and we just kind of put a period at the end of that. Because in my opinion, any any law I, written after that actually restricts our I rights. I agree. The New Hampshire Constitution very clearly says you have the right of conscience, right. which is basically a way to define your own sense of self-ownership, which means... I think X, Y, and Z, so you, who also think something different, are not allowed to make me do the things you think are right. So the reason why I th think 
all of this other than egos and, you know, the need to feel like they have to do things. I think part of the problem is, um, one, the courts don't do what they actually should be doing. Somebody says, wait a minute, you can't tell me I have to do this, so I'm going to take it to court. And the court goes and says, well, that's fine, but there's nothing in the law. because But, but, but that's remember when the courts stopped actually applying the law by actually using the definitions of I words and th saying they this mean logically means this when they became activist courts that were like oh well you know we're so gonna say that the word uh limited but not including or you whatever. know like whatever means the actual right. literal uh, opposite right. of what the clear meaning of the word is is why we are well, where we then, are right today. so they so you've got two things the court's doing two things one not just looking at the New Hampshire Constitution and saying, well, it does say we, you know, you have an inherent right or right of conscious or whatever. And then hard stop, figure it out yourself. But then you have the court making bad decisions when the court says that cherish means fund. So now the legislature has to go and say, well, crap, you, uh, now we have to define what this means because the court apparently makes up its own rules. But let's also just analyze what a court system claims to be. So my big beef with mm. the government and all its apparatus underneath it, right, is they're claiming this godlike uh, power, yes. right? So the courts and the precedent system, so uh, stare decoris is... Uh, Decisis, I think, is how you say it in Latin, right? So that's basically precedent, right? So it's basically like, oh, we uh, the Supreme Court is like, well, these are our decisions, and this is what we decided. They also, thereby, with that entire system, go, we're never wrong. Right. So think about it. So right. you've created a system where it's literally, I mean, I, there are right. probably less than 30 in the history of the Supreme Court. I think it's less than that, actually. It might be like 10-ish. Cases that have ever been overturned by the a Supreme Court, uh, like a Supreme Court overturning its, its own self. decision, right. right? So, And those usually take like 30 years. There's a concrete example in New Hampshire yep. with the Fenneman case that yep, we've yep. talked about on the show, right, with Right to Know, where the bad decision happened in 93. The bad decision was some judge who said, hey, and, you know, I'm speculating, but I'm pretty sure they were like, yeah, we like cops. We don't like these other people. We're so, just going to say everything that's in a police officer's personnel file is, is now forever secret from the people paying the bills, which, in my opinion, is crazy talk, right? That was 93. That's what they said. Right. It took till last year, yeah. so till 20. Oh. 2020, 27 years yep. to overturn a bad decision. So when they make bad decisions, it also has generational right. impacts right. on us. Now, the question is, you know, with something like the Fenneman case and right to know, and, you know, in the New Hampshire Constitution literally says, of course, you're allowed to see everything the government does because they are of the people and they are your agents and substitutes, so they shouldn't be able to do anything you can't do. So, you know, I'm not allowed to cruise around and shoot people in the back and just walk away, but hey, you know, you can if uh, because of the Fenneman thing. So basically, you know, part of the problem and the national problem that we're seeing with police, with police reform and all of that, is because we allowed these courts and these people to make these junk right, decisions, decisions that aren't. And then it takes forever to, to fix it. the problem. So again, that is why I'm for limited, small constitutional government. Um, and it should be way more limited. <laughs> well, I would like, that's what I mean. You look at, you know, I, I don't know how big the printed RSAs actually are, but let, you know, there's a shelf of books when you're in the legislature in the room. So I'm assuming there's a lot, it's a lot of pages, but you know, it would be so much nicer if we could streamline some of it and not have so much in law. Um, I just don't think our society, I don't think people, I don't think enough people can, are willing to, or have, are capable of making, um, just sound basic judgments no, on see, but the because so many times when somebody says, I mean, some of the things you see, like whether it's on Facebook or in like next door, you know, my neighbor put up a fence. 
the first thing somebody says is, well, you should call the police. And I'm always like, when did that become part of the job of the police? Like, hey, Mr. Policeman, uh, there's a fence. And I always think, did, but I always think, wow, have you thought that even through about but, why so, you would call the police? But do you understand why that is? It's because of our public schools that yes. have created the structure where we have literally said, Everything is an appeal this, to authority. Now, in the olden days, that appeal to authority was an appeal to your God or your, right, you know, your, right. your spiritual leader or whatever, right? So over time, people kind of replaced that role, or a lot of people did with this, again, godlike state. And so this appeal to authority is this notion that you learn in school. And I know I've said this on the show before, and I'm going to say it again. It really opened my eyes. I was talking to someone who uh, went to school in America, mm -hmm. and he said his aha moment when he started to turn libertarian was when they were taking a class on the Constitution, yes. and they were being told, you know, these are the rights you have. You have the right to free speech, you have this right, you have that right, you have all these things. And then he said, but we don't have any of those rights in this school. Like, we don't, you know, we have to right. ask permission to go to the bathroom. We're not right. allowed to say what we want. We're restricted from wearing certain shirts. We are controlled in this way and that way and all of that. And he was like, so here's a group of people telling me, oh, this is the laws and this is how the country is run. This but is how here. the system works. But in this place that these same people have full control over the school, right? You have none of those rights. And so that will create in any thinking person cognitive dissonance because you're like, you're like, wait, I don't understand. Which way how, is it? How can that be? How can we have these rights? You control this thing, but we don't have these rights here. So somewhere you're lying to me. And once you figure out they're lying to you, the next step after you get over those, you know, anger and <laughs> disappointment and all of that is actually to come out the other side and to be like, okay, I understand the lay of the land now. What can I do? And then from there, I think, you know, self-empowerment and personal responsibility and personal all that Personal responsibility would go a long way because if we started build actually expecting people to be responsible for themselves, they would, and then there wouldn't... Oh, right. And, and two things, because I think people forget this. You know, a lot of times when we talk about small, limited government, people just hear like, oh, Carla, you don't want kids to learn. Like you're anti-education, you you're anti-school. Right. You're, 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 Who's going to pave the roads? All of that. And the point is, everyone back home needs to understand taking away that sort of appeal to authority and that sort of notion oh, of, uh, you know, everything, everything <laughs> that happens is a person, human action doing it right so i had a fight with someone at the state house once and they were like who paved the roads and i was like who paves them now and they were like what do you mean the <laughs> government does and i was like no literally who paves the roads and she was like huh and i was like it's people there's a dude with a mixer with the, the tar and there are guys with the flags and it's humans so we're not saying if there was limited government that there wouldn't be roads. Right. We're just saying it would be paid for in a different way by the people who want to use whatever it is. And it would still create jobs. If you love teaching in our world, you would, be, you would make good, good money teaching would, in a school you enjoyed or in an education environment yeah. that you enjoyed teaching in. So, so I think when people are looking at this sort of change in these paradigms, don't just look at the problems, actually look at the opportunities and look at the things. I talk to a lot of teachers who are frustrated yes. with the red tape and all the... And all the testing and they have to do it a certain way. way and, and all of that. And it's like, no, I want to liberate you to yeah. be your yeah. best self in your environment doing the best job you can do. And if that sounds scary to you, maybe some self-reflection on... Am I doing the best job in my life? Um, or, or is there room for improvement? And then go down that path because that improvement path is also motivating and fun and engaging and it really makes you feel alive. The, um, How did we get to 10 uh, minute warnings? This Sorry. is what happens. I'm gonna let we, we talk get, no, I'm just going <laughs> to um, education a couple things. So I wanted to just really quickly also say um, right now at the up in Concord, you've got um, the, the Senate and the House. Um, negotiating things that they 
they both like, but maybe aren't a complete agreement. So they have what's committed, called committee of conferences and they, they the, send representatives and they hash out and sometimes the bill doesn't make it through and sometimes it does. In the case of the budget, there's the H, um, I don't know if it's HP1 at this point, there's the budget bill and then there's always a trailer bill and the trailer bill is the legislative changes to support the the money the money side. But um, they did, um, the it's Senate- the sausage and the mustard. It is, <laughs> um, but the Senate did include um, education freedom accounts in the trailer bill. So that is amazing news. Um, I also read that they are keeping the 24 week abortion ban in the trailer bill and they're I believe today discussing continuing discussing um, critical race theory type language for that. Um, so it'll be interesting. We'll know in another week or so what how that plays out. Um, you mentioned change. I uh, saw an article in the paper earlier this week about a lot of changes happening downtown, which I was completely unaware of. Apparently, the owner of the Sash Shashkeen, I can never say that Shashkeen. Well, don't try and say I'm it after four beers. beers. After a few beers after Shashkeen. <laughs> um, anyways, he and I believe the manager of Bonfire are now the owners of Bonfire. So oh. that's interesting. Um, they, they're keeping the name. I don't know how much, if it'll be the same. Like, I don't know if they'll still have free bacon at happy hour time, because that was an amazing thing. Um, they are also own Torch next door, which was a pizza place, but they said that'll be closed for now because everybody's struggling to find help, so they can't possibly have both. Uh, Panusha's Music Hall is now called the 603 Bar and Grill. Didn't know that. Huh. Uh, Seasons on Elm, which I couldn't tell you where it was, to be honest, but I know because it will become Cheers and Beers, which I've been. there's been signs on the wall for oh, a while. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Um, they're looking for help. Oh, it's, isn't that it, in the like old right Mott Ba space? Maybe? No, no, Mott Ba is the eight. 66 Bar and Grill, which oh. will be a rock and roll theme, um, comes from the address 866 Elm, and its logo will include the Route 66 signs. Interesting. That's opening next month. Um, there was another one. Oh, the GOAT is, will be opening on Old Granite Street this summer. Um, they're located in Portsmouth now, and that one, that's a little less. They're taking over, uh, what was it, Manch Vegas or whatever. So oh, we're going from a little, okay. little less problematic place to a little bit more, you know. Not problematic, um, but it's it, it is a <laughs> young people today. Damn young <laughs> um, it is nice to see some changes, and it's good to see business owners still tr still willing to you know stick their neck outs and open things up because it is very very difficult, especially in the restaurant and hospitality industry, to find people to work. Um, the downside of that is. Um, not downside of it, but the flip bad thing was uh, last night I was reading that all of the, um, all of the, uh, not a, a bunch of the flowers that in town Manchester planted plants at Veterans Park, somebody ripped them out and threw them in the street. And I'm like, what is wrong with people? Why, why would anybody, and somebody goes, well, it could be mental illness. And I'm like, the mental illness that require that causes you to rip flowers out of the ground, that's not mental illness. That's, that's like vagrancy. Somebody just be a problem. It'll be interesting to see. I said, if there's surveillance from like the hotel across the street or whatever, um, if they have, were to figure out who it was, that person should have to like weed the medians on Grand <laughs> Street for the entire season just to learn to appreciate. I mean, I, I am definitely more for having the actual punishment fit the fit crime the, right, and sort relevant. of figuring stuff so out that people, and, instead of putting, you know, I don't want to put these people, people in jail. And, and then something just last having... week, I'm trying to think of what the story was. It was stupid. There was a guy who got. Was a, was a drug addict and back eight years ago, like stole some groceries in dairy or whatever. Eight years ago, he is currently a $31 an hour welder, oversees a team of four people or whatever. And the judge put him in jail for 30 days. And I thought, how, who is that benefiting not like eight years later? We're not, first of all, why does it take eight years to resolve a charge from 2013? But like, Seriously, can who we, benefits from that? Nobody benefits. Can from we that. talk about you know? Only I if it takes very quickly because we're going to run out of time. <laughs> I uh, speedy trials. That is not a thing it's anymore. It's not a thing. Trials, the entire criminal justice system. Trials are just, not a thing. We talked to a judge. Um, this was a couple years ago. Now we were having a conversation with a retired judge who said there are um, prosecutors, there are attorneys, or maybe it was judges that have never actually seen a case go to trial because everything is plea bargained and plea bargains while look, it look, sounds good usually 
are well, well, not good for the person charged with the crime. No, I mean, 99% literally of uh, cases are now pled out and the system still can't even manage the 1% of the cases that are going to trial takes, you know, 18 months to four years to even that's have insane. your day in court. And that's without waiving your yeah. um, your right to a speedy trial. And I will tell you, Tammy, you know, I grew up in, in sort of a banana republic and those were the things you would see. And I remember coming to America and just being so impressed with everything. And it's just a long, slow slide. And so if we want to arrest that, if we don't want to become just, you know, another banana republic, banana republic, then, you know, we've got to limit the size and scope of government. That's how we do it. And we have to stop over criminalizing everything because the outcome of a too big government is too many laws, which causes all this criminal justice problem. The jails, the people, the, well, you know, the people, like, you know, who, who end up not being employable yep. and all of that, it's well, all another, interrelated. That's another th thing I saw this week, which I was like, yay, that's that's good use of if we're gonna do this. Uh, New Hampshire prison system has, um, like actual vocational training things. So they were just showing cosmetologists and I'm thinking, I can imagine, imagine, I mean, for whatever reason you ended up incarcerated, the worst thing is when you get out trying to get a life because nobody, it's hard to find a job. You don't have any money, you know, like all these things. So they're teaching cosmetology. But that also creates a dependent class. Exactly. Let's stop making so the problems worse. Now, now <laughs> when the, so these people come out of the, the system and they have yeah. a, 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 a employable skill. I mean, in this case, these people would be licensed cosmetologists. You can go and get a job. I mean, right. we know. I or at know. least, like, you know, work, uh, do a business from home and Something. build that up Something. and stuff. I anyway. saw we got the warning, so yeah. I'm going to plug my, check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, Stories of Hope, mostly. Uh, it's available on Amazon and on my website, CarlaGarrick.com. And obviously, if you have any feedback, anything you want us to talk about, any guests you'd like to see us have, anything in general, know about a good plant sale, things, um, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Um, Carla does a great job of uploading our videos and we do them live on Facebook. Um, so you have plenty of ways to check it out in the future if you miss the episode on Manchester Public Television. That's all we have for this week. Enjoy the weather. Uh, Carla will not be with me next week. I'm going to see if I can't get Victoria Sullivan to sit in for you. Awesome. And um, we'll, I'll see you next week and she'll see you two weeks from now. I will. Have a good one. Bye, guys. <laughs>